Hello everyone and welcome back to my channel. Today we are looking at this Voodoo 3 that was part of a package that was sent to me from Brazil. We looked already at a Socket 1 motherboard that had an issue with the BIOS and I was able to fix it using an ISA video card. But today we want to fix the graphics card that was originally in this board and from what I know is that this card suffers from artifacts. There are several possibilities why we have artifacts on this card. One could be physical damage on the card and you see here some scratches. Another issue could be maybe one of the memory chips has a loose pin. I think there is nothing at the back of the card. This here is just, I think there was a heatsink glued on this side of the card. And the third reason could be, well, maybe we have an issue with the 3DFX chip. Maybe one of the solder balls under this chip is weakened or cracked and that is not good because, well, I haven't had the best of luck with BGA rework. But anyway, we'll try to figure this out. Now, this card is the Voodoo 3 1000 and there are two giveaways why this is a Voodoo 3 1000. Well, the very obvious one is the sticker on the BIOS chip here. Voodoo 3 1000. The other hint is the type of memory that is used here. This is SG RAM and I think most of the Voodoo 3 2000, 3000 and 3500 have SD memory. The Voodoo 3 1000 was a lower clocked version. If I'm not mistaken, the core is clocked at 125 MHz and that is why some of these cards came without a heatsink. This card did come with a heatsink and according to the owner it was removed. So yeah, we have to keep an eye on these temperatures. I think I can use the card without a heatsink until I run a 3D application. But first we want to see what are these artifacts about. Now let me plug this into the original system and let's see what picture this card is producing. And there is no picture. I did change the graphics card quickly because I know there is a setting in the BIOS that picks the initial VGA slot so either you can pick between PCI or AGP and right now it is set to PCI so let's change this to AGP and see if that makes a difference. Okay so the PCI card is still being detected. Now let's try the Voodoo 3 again. Oh, oh, okay. So yeah, that's not only a little bit of an issue, that is uh, a big issue. That's not even a few artifacts, this is a lot. And the card gets hot. Okay, the artifacts are changing when I'm pressing a specific memory chip. It could be the flex of the board as well, but I don't see a change when I'm pressing on the 3DFX chip. Let's try this one more time. This time I want to record also me pressing on the card. Now the big problem is if the memory chip is bad, I don't have a replacement for this. That will be a little bit tricky. So let me press on the card and then we'll see how the picture changes. I have a feeling it's this memory chip here. I don't see a change when I'm pressing on the 3DFX chip. I believe it's maybe just weak solder connection around one of the memory chips. Anyway, it could also be physical damage. Let's figure that out under the microscope. Oh, almost a clean picture, almost. But yeah, this one looks like a memory issue. Either it's a solder ball or the memory. Okay, let's inspect the card quickly. And you know the rule with damages on a PCB. If we see a scratch, we have to look around and maybe we'll spot something that gives us a hint. So here we see already some scratches going over the PCB, but I don't think these traces are cut. This is the memory chip I pressed on. Hmm. 
Oh. Hey. <laughs> what happened here? There's a scratch. And that pin doesn't look so good. Uh, that may be everything that's wrong. I well, it looks like it's a. This one looks like it's a data pin because it's the trace is thinner. So here you have thinner traces, and here's a thicker trace. So this one here could be ground or power. These ones, luckily, look just like data pins. These are all data pins. Data, data, data. This one here looks like a power or ground. This thick trace that goes on to this pin. So yeah, we might just be lucky and we have a little bit of a well, tilted pin on this memory chip. And where was it? Here. And again, you see, well, there was physical damage on the board and something scratched over these two traces, damaged them a little bit and bumped into this pin, and now, well, we have a bent pin. Otherwise, that chip may be okay. I will still reflow the solder around this chip. I don't think I will reflow all the rest. They look fine, to be honest. But it's very interesting. I already suspected this one memory chip to be the 40 one. So, yeah, that was a little bit of a lucky coincidence, I think. But, well, if that's all that we need to do, great. Here it is. So, let's fix this problem. But before we start working on this, I want to thank PCBWay for sponsoring today's video. PCBWay is your trusted partner for turning ideas into reality. Those shiny PCBs, fresh out of PCBWay's factory, will soon power up your vintage sound cards with Wavetable Sound. I rely on PCBWay for all my projects because their products are high quality, their service is dependable and the team is always ready to help with my questions. Beyond PCBs, PCBWay offers CNC machining, 3D printing, sheet metal fabrication and injection molding to bring your vision to life. Ready to make your ideas a reality? Head over to PCBWay.com and get started. Links are in the video description. Okay, I need to be careful. I don't want to break off that pin and it looks like it may still be attached to, well, a little bit of the solder here. But this pin definitely makes contact with the neighboring pin. So let's try to get this pin away. I try to not put a lot of pressure on it because it's like a spring. If I somehow slip or the pin gets weak, it will just snap off and fly away. And we want to avoid this. I do not want to drill into the chip housing. Not today. I need stronger tweezers. Mm, they're too big. There we go. Okay, I think this is it. Okay, so let's reflow some solder. Okay, and I will also reflow the solder around the entire chip now because I poked around it and yeah, I didn't feel very comfortable with these solder joints here, specifically the ones that I poked. So let's just get the entire chip quickly reflown and then we can test the card. And if the artifacts are gone, I have to put a heatsink on this Voodoo 3 1000.
Okay, chip is reflown. Let's see if we still get artifacts. Okay, and... <laughs> okay. Let's see if we get a BIOS message from the card. I think it was too short. I can't see it or there is none. But the artifacts are gone. So it was just a simple pin on the memory chip. Now unfortunately, I need to I need to put a heatsink on this card. It's too hot. Okay, but we still need to test it obviously. Now the crazy artifacts that we've seen initially are gone. That is good. So yeah, chances are that this card is actually working. And then I can send both items back to the owner. So yeah, this was a very successful project. But let's check if the card actually renders 3D games now. Regarding a heatsink, unfortunately I only have this very small square heatsink with a adhesive tape. And I don't even trust this properly, so what I will do is I will just add a thermal compound blob here in the center and then I will stick this on top of it. I hope it's good enough for testing. I do have thermal glue, but I would rather avoid this because if you ever have an issue with the 3DFX strip, it will just be a nightmare to get this thing off. Yeah, here's my botched together temporary solution. At least there's some heatsink here that takes away some of the heat. But yeah, so this is my botched together solution right now. Let's try it. Okay, no post message. But we have a clean picture. Okay, let's go into Windows. And hopefully we see the Voodoo 3 detected. Okay. I hope I have drivers on this system. There we are. There we are. So, we may be lucky. Okay, I probably will restart. Yes. Do you have a Voodoo 3 1000? Do you get a post message when you're starting your PC? Like, you know, it's the first thing that usually shows up when you power on the system. Okay, let's quickly have a look what kind of frequencies we are dealing with. I think it's 125 megahertz on the core and the memory. And where do I find this? I think maybe here, GPU. Yes, we do have 125 megahertz on the clock and the memory is also 125. So yes, there we go. This is a Voodoo 3 1000. Now let's go and try a benchmark. This is why we're here trying to figure out if this 3D accelerator is working. <laughs> yes, the card works. So yeah, that's a easy repair today. But I hope that the owner is happy that both of those items are back alive. Something that hasn't been touched for over 20 years. And now both of them are back in service. Of course the Voodoo 3 1000 is a little bit held back. I want to go back into Everest. I think we're only using one texture mapping unit. And there should be a way to unlock a second one. Maybe we look at this one quickly before we wrap up. So we got 2,155 points. Let's see if you can do something about this disabled texture mapping unit. Okay, so we have... Oh no, we have already two. Okay, so I think this card is at its maximum. So no, this is not the cut down version. We have one pipeline and two TMUs. So no, nothing to be done. This is just a Voodoo 3 2000 with a lower clock speed, as far as I know. If I say something wrong, please correct me in the comments. Otherwise, this is all for today. Thank you so much for your time. Thanks for watching. And I hope you enjoyed this laid back repair today, which was really easy to be honest. It is just physical damage. So thank you so much PCBWay for sponsoring this video. Also, thank you to all my Patreons for supporting my work. If you want to become a Patreon, head over to Patreon and pick one of the membership tiers. Thank you so much. Take care and bye bye.